eh, tomé la decisión de que, que voy a ir a Miami. Eh, todavía no tengo cerrado 100%, nos falta algunas cosas, pero, pero bueno, decidimos, decidimos continuar el, el camino ahí. You don't have to blink twice. You don't have to pinch yourself. You are not dreaming. Lionel Messi is coming to enter Miami. Hello and welcome to everyone. Hola y bienvenidos a todos. You are listening to Miami Total Football Radio, the number one podcast for all things Inter Miami, a podcast that is both bilingual and that has been listened to in more than 50 countries. It's also a podcast where the beautiful game collides with passion and analysis. Here we provide you with all the latest news, analysis, opinions, inside information, general punditry, and much more via a group of seasoned South Florida-based reporters. Yes, that means we're on the ground here at, uh, we need a nickname for it. We need a nickname for Messi's mo- home. Messi, I'm not going to say the motherland, but we need a nickname for it. Anyway, my name is Franco Penizo. I'm one of your usual co-hosts of this show and this is an emergency podcast because Wednesday was a massive day for the South Florida side it was a massive day for MLS and we could say it was a massive day for Lionel Messi and the next stage of his career so we're recording after midnight for the first time ever so I guess technically it's now Thursday but nonetheless joining me are my two usual co-hosts and that of course is or they of course are Jose Armando, a.k.a. Island Jose, and Andrea Yanes, a.k.a. Ajicita. You guys, I'm sure you are excited, exhilarated, also probably tired and drained after a very busy day that, oh, by the way, also included an Inter-Miami U.S. Open Cup victory. But I'll start with Jose. How are you doing on this Wednesday night slash Thursday morning? Oh, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I mean, it's been a long, long day. It all started with, you know, Dolphins mini camp and, you know, the possibility of an announcement being imminent and um, talking to players over there about Messi coming. Then obviously the news, you know, it, it, it became real. And then, you know, radio, TV all over the place. It's been exciting. It's It's been exciting. I think it... it, it it has paid off all the hard work of these years. And, you know, not only since the start of Inter Miami, but since, you know, the David Beckham announcement back in the day in Paris Art Museum, um, it has paid off because, you know, it's nice when you see people coming to you looking for information about Inter Miami. So, um, yeah, it's 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 been an exciting day, I guess. You know, it's going to be hard to forget what this day was like. Andreita. Andrea. Andrea. <laughs> How are you? I- I'm delirious. I'm delirious. It's been a really long day for me. I- I'll explain a lot of it, of what happened today for me in a, in a bit during the pod, um, which will be focused all on-, on Messi. But Andrea, how are you on this Wednesday night slash Thursday morning? Well, I guess all of the three of us are very tired. It's been a long day but listen i'm very excited uh i'm glad that we could find the time to do this podcast even at this hour in la madrugada Mm -hmm. as we as we are doing it now because it's really exciting times for people here in south florida and uh um we've been busy all day as as also said we were at the dolphins in the morning we planned to go to the marlins and then had to cancel because of the announcement so uh it was a crazy day and uh, I'm really excited. And also uh, uh, people <laughs> have been sending me messages, uh, people that listen to Miami Total Football Radio, <laughs> talking yes, about my yes. 2% because, yes. well, I got fooled. I got fooled by La Porta. I have to say that I have to come and put my face, dar la cara, that I was fooled. And uh, uh, Inter Miami really did it. Uh, the league really did it. And uh, Messi is coming to Inter Miami. And I'm I'm really happy to to be able to see people enjoy that because we can talk about uh, the football side of things and that Messi is 35 years old and blah 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 that this is a retirement league, but this is big. 
we were talking with Jose that this is as big as LeBron coming to to the Miami Heat when he did. So it, I'm really excited, and I'm really excited to to talk about with you, uh, to talk about it with you guys. Speaking of dando la cara, right, which means showing face for you English speakers or English only speakers. Today's news, I mean, it's always been in the works, but today's news has convinced me that it's time for us to go to a video format. And we'll probably do so after the international break. Not immediately after. We'll probably still have one more pod where it's audio only, but it's time for us to go to video format, which I need to figure out how to do and familiarize myself with, but expect that to be happening very, very soon. So it's always been in the works. It's always been in the plans, but it's time to to make good on that idea. I think it's time. More than time. So you'll be seeing our lovely faces, if you want to call them that, <laughs> soon enough. So nonetheless, we will be talking here on this episode about Inter Miami and their I future. I will be needing a hair and makeup um, money. <laughs> um, yeah, well, maybe, maybe if we if we if we land some sponsors, <laughs> now maybe that, that we have Messi, yeah, we maybe, maybe that'll sponsor. be. We are open for business. <laughs> yeah, maybe that'll be in the works. Maybe we can make that happen. But no, we will be talking about Inter Miami's future with Lionel Messi, positionally where he can play, how we see him fitting in this team, what is realistic for expectations for the rest of this season. We'll talk about Wednesday night's game in the U.S. Open Cup between Inter Miami and Birmingham Legion. And I'm going to make this lovely couple here eat some crow. Andrea already did a little bit there, but I'm going to make them eat some crow. So, Miami Total Football Radio listeners, I know you're excited. Let's get to it. All right. Before we dive into Messi and all of it and everything that it all entails, I have to ask you guys if you're going to eat your words. Andrea did a little bit. I'm curious to see if Jose does as well. Because on the last pod, what? which was literally well, recorded, hold on, hold on, wait, 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 no, wait, no, find stop, stop, him. hold on, clear, hold right? on, hold on, hold on, <laughs> we recorded a pod on Monday night, and it dropped Tuesday morning, and we're recording, what, a day and a half later, maybe almost two days later, and literally two days ago, I asked you on the pod, and we talked about Messi, and the chances of him coming. Now, because the pod was long, I did have to do some post-production. So people didn't actually get to hear the percentages you guys threw out in terms of Messi's arrival. They heard the overall stances and takes about it being unlikely, but they didn't really hear your guys' overall takes. Because at the end of the pod, we talked about percentages. I asked Andrea and Jose, and this did not make the final cut, which I regret, Tremendously now, but I'll share it with you guys. I asked Jose and Andrea what they think were the chances that Messi would come to enter Miami. Andrea gave it a whopping, startling 2%. <laughs> Jose was a little more generous, and he gave it a 10%. I gave it 33%, and I think your guys' pessimism rubbed which off on me. Which is more than ours, but not big Co- enough. Which is why I think your pessimism rubbed off on me because I should have said 50%. I never <laughs> saw I never saw uh Saudi Arabia as a realistic option for Messi. I know the money was great and all that, but I just never thought it fit his brand, never thought it fit who he was as a player. For Cristiano Ronaldo, it makes more sense. You know, his brand is more about him and him being the 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 star guy and always trying to show off. What do be- we know about brands? I mean, come on! Uh, is what that is that not is that not Cristiano Ronaldo's? Messi. You don't know Messi's brand. He's Cristiano a fan. Cristiano Ronaldo's come brand. Come on, Jose. Come on. Come on. Jose. No, let's, let's, the let's reality talk is, the let's reality talk. is that we were almost correct because if Barcelona had gotten their money problems in order, had sold whatever players they had to sell. Messi won't, wouldn't be coming to Inter Miami. And that is a fact. He said it from his own mouth. That that is why he's coming to Inter Miami. So I guess we were right in a sense. 
we all of us because no, we didn't no, 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 think no, 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 that no. he 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 would. I'm not giving you. I'm not. We're not doing participation trophies here. You guys were so down on it happening that you didn't think it was gonna happen. Two percent and ten percent. No, that's. I mean, listen. You said thirty. Hey, I said thirty-three. <laughs> I said thirty-three. I said, 33. I said and that's still that's not even fifty. That's not even half. Significantly, <laughs> significantly higher than both of you. If you round it up, it's nearer to zero than to a hundred, Franco. So okay. don't be playing. <laughs> I can see. I, it's still significantly higher than both of you guys. And I've always said for years. Yeah, you were always you believed it. that I thought Inter Miami would make a real chance at signing him. Did I think Messi would come? I mean, it, the decision is his. But I always thought MLS and Inter Miami, you can go back to pods from years ago when we started the show. I always thought Inter Miami would make a very serious push with MLS's help to try to bring them over. And that's exactly what's happened. So listen, if you guys want to, you know, say your piece there and say, look, you know, we got it wrong, then that's fine. No problem. And we'll move on. If you don't, also fine. But uh, and then I'll let I'll just let the listeners and the Twitter followers have at it. Uh, I was on a on a different podcast earlier today a uh, different show and in the comment section sure enough there was a message about andrea being dead wrong about this one so it's it, i'll give you the floor and then we'll move on to the actual news so jose i'll start with you because you you don't sound like you're ready to to cave there so what do you want me to say did you got it wrong you know raise your hand and say i got it wrong i you know jorge mas jose mas yeah. prove me wrong no 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 I'm not gonna. No, I'm not gonna go there. No, I'm not gonna go there. Uh, I think you know, I, I got it wrong. I guess if you want me to say that, you know, ten percent is not, it's not, it's not sixty, seventy, eighty percent. I guess that's that's pretty easy to figure out. But you know, yeah, I mean, it's it's great. I'm happy that I'm wrong. I mean, why wouldn't I want Messi to play for the team I cover? I mean, it's it's good. It's, I'm I'm happy to be wrong. I'm happy. I'm happy about this. It's I'm perfectly fine with being wrong. Andrea, anything else? Yeah, I said it. I, I, that I was happy also that that I was wrong. That I was wrong, <laughs> but that doesn't uh, negate the fact, Franco, that it came out from Messi's mouth that if Barca, Barca was his first option, this is okay. his second option. Okay. Can you agree to that? I will not agree to that. And there's a reason for why. He said it. Andre, Andrea. Andrea. Listen. Franco, he said it on his interview with Mundo. Andrea, Popular I can tell you I'm six foot five and have multi-millions in my bank account. I can say whatever I want. That does not make it real. Listen. Messi has, uh, has emotional ties to Barcelona. It's where he started his career. It's where he had uh, all of his, not all, a lot of his success, the bulk of his success of his career, you know, so there's emotional ties there to the fans, to the city. So he's going to say, I think, public things that are positive. He's not going to say, look, oh, I didn't want to go there. To me, and I've told you this guy, to, I've told you guys this before. When I saw Jorge Mas with Lionel Messi's entourage at the World Cup final, Argentina versus France in Qatar. That, to me, said everything you needed to know about Inter-Miami's chances of signing Lionel Messi. And if it goes back that far, and, and uh, excuse me, Mas is that close to Messi's people, to his inner circle, to his entorno, then this has been in the works for a while. I don't think that Messi, over the last two, three days... Was just like you know what? Uh, well, you know, I'm just gonna make this decision kind of abruptly, and you know, I've weighed my options for two days, and that's it. No, look, Messi is a global superstar, a phenomenon. He's not your average person. There's a lot of planning that goes into all of this. Look, the Apple documentary that's been announced as part of this that was announced on Tuesday, so a day before Messi made his announcement, and that was already in the plans for who knows how long from Apple. So. This, for me, has been in the works for a long time. I think he's saying what he said about Barcelona, and this is just my opinion, my sensation, and you guys probably won't agree with it. I think he's just saying that publicly as lip service to say like, well, I wanted to go to Barcelona, but it didn't, it just didn't work out. Look, if he wanted to wait, he could wait. He could wait for them to to offload salaries and get rid of some players, although he says he didn't want Barcelona to do that, he didn't want to be in that position. 
it, to me, it's just all lip service for Barcelona fans and and the city there that he that I'm sure he does care for in his heart. But well, you know exactly the same thing. I mean, anybody else could say exactly the same thing when, when you know, when he gives us a, a a good opinion about about Inter Miami. You know, he needs to do that. I mean, I don't know. I think you know it's that's just like going too far to. Yeah. You know, it's it's just as simple as that. You know, that's what he said. You know, he's an Inter Miami. You know, I think there are bigger, much bigger things. You know, like you know things that will happen for the team. Like we can already see the impact, like in, on social media. You know, the numbers, how far, uh, how far my um, uh, Messi took Inter Miami in terms of social media reach already. You know, those are things that we can see right now. But you know, talking about what he, if he really meant what he said about Barca? I mean, how can we honestly debate that? Right? I mean, can you really prove it that he didn't? I mean can't it? prove it. I'm just telling you what I think. Sure. I'm telling you what I think. And okay. again, I point to Jorge Mas being with his entourage at the World Cup final. The World Cup the final, world- brother. This is not the World Cup opener. This world is not the, the group stage finale. This is the World Cup oh. final. How did how did Jorge Mas get there? How how was he so close to Messi's entourage and in, in Torno to be there? Because they had an offer. It's been obvious that they made an offer as well as Saudi Arabia, as well as Barca, and as well as PSG. You know, in the in the World I, Cup, I haven't the, seen Saudi Arabia's people in in his Franco, suite at the World Cup final. All I'm saying is that my interpretation is that Inter Miami was not a secondary option. It reminded me it was a very realistic, if not preferred option. That's my sensation, my interpretation, my supposition, just reading and reading through the, between the lines and, and listening to what he said. That's just me. You don't have to agree with it. That's just me. But let's talk okay. about what it means. What it all means. What does this mean for Inter Miami? Right? Because, I mean, if today's anything to go by, lives are about to change in a big, big way. For anyone in and around Inter Miami, whether you're a fan, whether you're a media member, whether you're a club employee, whether you are a player, coach, things are about to change drastically if Wednesday is anything to go by. And I do think it is something to go by. Jose, what can we expect on the day to day? With Messi Mania. That's what I'm going to call it. We can call it Messi Miami Mania. We can call it Miami Messi Mania. Whatever you want to call it. Messi Mania if you just want to do it that way. But what do you expect that we should expect, all of us, on the day-to-day once he arrives? Which, apparently, might be as early as July. Well, I, I think it's, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be... Um... It's going to be an event, you know. Every every single thing that he does in South Florida is going to be something that you know people will be monitoring around the world. So, you know, a lot of media attention. That's obvious. Uh, that's the one thing that you can expect out of this. Um, obviously, you know, I I like to I like to see him on the field as quickly as possible because you know that's I think that's what we all want to see really. You know. Um, as much as we get to enjoy the preview, the idea of him coming and, you know, expecting his arrival and and, and everything that goes around, I think bottom line is we want to see him play. So um, I think we can expect a lot of media attention. You know, things will change without a doubt around the club. You know, this was a team that, you know, I in the last few weeks, you know, it, it was – they didn't get a lot, a lot of media attention when it comes to even training sessions. Not a lot of media was there. Um, I am assuming that's going to change. Um, so, you know, I think it all starts with media right now. And as we get closer to his debut, then, you know, we might start thinking um, about something else. I'm, I'm already thinking about formations and all that, of course. Of course. But we're we're diving into that. We're diving into that here on this podcast, even though it's early preliminary. I do want to ask you this, Jose, and then Andrea... Uh, I would like you to share your thoughts. What was your day like? You know, how did you receive the news? You know, how did it start from morning until now? You know, just a quick a quick synopsis, a quick summary. You don't have to yeah. go into every little nook and cranny, but just overall, what was your day like? Well, you know, I, I when when something like this happens, you know, I usually. Uh, you 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 have the outlets that you, that you want to monitor, you know, 
um, colleagues that you really believe in. And and once I saw that, you know, the information was flowing, um, I, I got a call in the morning and um, um, that call was uh, reassuring that it, it was happening. So, you know, right after that, then I started to work on on um, I write in Deporte Total USA. I'm, I'm assuming a lot of people that listen to this don't know, but that's the outlet that I cover the, the team for. So um, we started working on a lot of the stuff that we needed to post before the announcement. And uh, and then, you know, as, as it became official, then I, start get, I started getting calls from San Juan in, in Argentina. The people wanted me to do something for them. Then, you know, TV in in Honduras that they wanted to do something as well. They know, of course, that I live here and that I cover the team. And yeah, more more calls. Tomorrow I have more of that. And um, and yeah, that that was that was my day. And then of course I wanted to watch the the Open Cup game, you know, because bottom line to me that's really my favorite part of this job. You know, I I, I love the game. I love the game. So. Um, I, I made an effort to to watch the game and at the same time work on other things. So it was an up and down day, an up and down day, really. The NBA Finals, you know, they went by, to be honest. Like, they went by and I was like just, you know, watching through Twitter because th there was just not enough time. <laughs> so for me, I will share that I was on the computer practically all day. All day. Uh, scrolling through Twitter on my phone, uh, looking things up on the computer. I was probably doing Twitter most of the time. And I was reaching out to people as well. I got some insight into how Inter-Miami uh, in Alabama was taking the news. So I was just super busy just keeping track of it all and trying to, to get some reaction. Once this thing started to really gain steam and it started to look more and more like he was going to go with Inter Miami, right? Because in the morning it was still like up in the air, although it seemed like he was leaning towards Inter Miami. Then as the afternoon, you know, arrived, then it looked like all right, well, it's likely going to be Inter Miami unless there's these last minute offers or last minute chances for Barcelona or Al Hilal. And then, with each passing minute, seemingly. It just intensified. My phone was ringing and buzzing nonstop from friends, personal friends that know what I do, that I, that I cover soccer, but who have nothing to do with soccer, who have never been to an Inter-Miami game, who don't watch it on a regular basis. And they were asking me, is this for real? Is this really happening? What does this mean? And it was those type of messages that didn't surprise me but that make you understand and help you understand the reach that this has. This was the biggest news item, not only in South Florida, not only in the United States, in most of the world. Messi announcing he's going to Inter-Miami. This has far-reaching implications. And I would say, look, I had four different hits that I did or four different appearances that I made on either podcasts or shows. I was on TV with Sky Sports in the United Kingdom. They asked me to come on and I did. First time I've been on with Sky Sports. The interest in this news is, it's, it's hard to describe in words, but it is immense and it is astounding and incredible. And I think it is a sign of what is to come when Messi arrives. Because when Messi arrives, I think we're going to have very similar vibes, probably even more intense, than when the big three were here with the Miami Heat. When LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh teamed up, and the Miami Heat had the Heatles for the four years. You know, it was often described as a circus that surrounded the team because there was so much media attention. I think that's what's coming for Inter-Miami. I think that's what we're going to see. That's what we're going to experience. That's what we're going to live. Uh, Andrea, I think it was you that just a few minutes ago mentioned, uh, or maybe it was Jose that mentioned people being able to go to the stadium to go watch Messi. Sure, but that's going to be a pretty penny now. Look at the tickets. Yeah. You know, if you've seen the people immediate aftermath. People were really mad with that, yes. You see people the immediate really aftermath, mad. and tickets mm -hmm. have skyrocketed, which is expected, which was expected. 
because it's Lionel Messi, fresh off of winning a World Cup. Probably, and yes, it's arguable, but probably the greatest player of all time. For me, I think he's the greatest of all time. I always said he needed to win trophies with Argentina. He won a Copa America. I still thought he needed a World Cup, and then he won the World Cup. You can be critical of how he won that, and you know he got a penalty kick in almost every game, etc., etc., but he won it. So for me now, he's the greatest of all time. It's going to be... I think our, our lives are going to change. For Inter-Miami fans' lives are going to change. Again, I think this whole thing is about to blow up in a big, big way. Wednesday was just a preview of what's to come. And, yeah. and, th- and I think, listen, I think it's going to put a massive spotlight on everything and everyone. Like, there's going to be real pressure. There's going to be real criticism when things don't go well. I think it's going to go across the board. If fans act in an unruly way that... Um, doesn't jive with general consensus, I think that's going to be talked about worldwide, which will then reverberate back to Inter Miami. And then, you know, I think things like that are going to happen. Media and the type of questions we ask and the way we go about things, I think that is also going to be under a bigger microscope. It, I think everything well, is going to be magnified and it's probably for the best, right? It's probably for the best. And yeah. I think it's, it's what comes with the territory of Lionel Messi. You know, I think, you know, with time, you know, things will start to slow down because um, and 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 I'll tell you my my thought process. You know, we're in South Florida and, you know, right here, everybody's happy about it. But, you know, there's another side to the story as well. You know, there's there's a lot of people outside of South Florida think, you know, this is the beginning of the end for Messi. You know, he's moving away from, you know, the top level. Um, And what is he really fighting for here? You know, criticism at the highest level, you know, comes with not winning the league, not winning the Champions League, not being the top player on your team. Um, Obviously, winning the Champions League is, is the highest price when you play at the club level. But... Is it really a big deal globally if Inter Miami wins MLS Cup? Can that compete with, you know, Real Madrid winning the Champions League? At the end of the day, things will start to slow down because everybody will realize it's a big move and we want to see what happens. But with time, you know, the big leagues, the top leagues, they will not lose any of their value just because Messi... He's playing in MLS. I don't know about so, any of their value. Any? And even, you know, his, his, his level of play. You know, he's going to, you know, he's not going to be around the same competition anymore. So, you know, that's why we have questions like in Argentina about the World Cup. Is he going to be able to play in 2026? Is he going to be good enough to play in the World Cup? Those are conversations that people are having someplace else right now. But obviously here in South Florida, you know, everybody is excited and everybody want to see the positive sides. But the reality of things is that if Messi was 26 years old, you know, he would not be in MLS right now. So I, I just want to give that perspective because I'm sure, you know, people coming from um, other countries, other places will listen to the pot right now. And and I don't know, I just want them to know that we acknowledge that part. At least I do. I acknowledge that part of the, of the story. But, you know... He's an Inter Miami, and we like the idea of him being here. It's massive for MLS, man. Like I, I can't understate how big this is for MLS because more eyeballs, more corporate sponsors, more money, all in the run up to the 2026 World Cup, which will be held in the United States, Canada, and Mexico. Like. I, MLS is investing. Adidas is investing. Everyone's but that needs investing. To translate in, you know, in, in, to the field, right? Because yeah, I mean, absolutely, you're gonna have more sponsors, more, more money is gonna come in, but at the same time, you know, that's that's gonna be a gradual progress, because if you if you put money in 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 the league's pocket and the owner's pocket, what are they going to do with that money? Because at the end of the day, the end of the day, 
you want to see a good product, right? You just don't want to see a, a, a league because they have a lot of money. I do think this will help bring more stars along. This is going to help not only Inter Miami, but MLS as a whole. Because Messi's here. And that's going to attract, again, revenue, players. Not and I, Look, Inter Miami is going to benefit in a big way. Because more and more players will now be willing to take some pay cuts to come play with Messi. They're going to get better deals. And need I remind you that in six months, the sanctions that they have from breaking the roster rules back in 2020, those end. So then Inter Miami's playing with a full deck of cards and with a big bargaining chip that other teams don't have. I think that is immense. Yeah, but the level of the league doesn't change. Well, Messi, I, don't, I don't know about Messi that. Messi has that responsibility, but right now it doesn't change. I don't know about we that. see how Inter Miami plays and all of that. That's, talking about the football side of things, you cannot say that the league will grow. The league will grow with money. Yes, that is the biggest part of this deal. But with football, you don't. You can talk about it because we have to see me, what Messi does on the field. What Messi do you get? What if you get a Messi that is already tired, that doesn't care, that is not committed? Yes, he's going to get a lot of money. But does he still have a responsibility to perform? Does he feel the pressure? He said it, that he wanted to go somewhere else that was easier to deal with, with all that because he doesn't want to deal with that anymore. So I think right now... It's I mean, but that's too. a reality, Andrea. That's a reality. The pressure, the pressure in Europe to play at the you highest levels... Exactly. This is not the highest level. That is what I'm saying. So we can talk about it... From the football side, and 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 dissect that, and I agree with Jose with his his point there, and we can talk about the money side and how that is good for the league, because the they way, are two different Miami, things. Inter Miami, I you know I always thought you know the first year for them was 2024. Now with having Messi here, I mean they really really should have a top team next year. Exactly. I mean, if you yeah. think about taking away sanctions and having Messi already, I mean, there's no other way to do it. Jose, hold on. I mean, hold on, hold on. You're jumping, you're jumping the gun because we need to talk about this season. We gotta talk about this season before we talk about next season. Because all right, all Messi, right. Messi's arriving in July. Apparently, his first game might be July 21st in the League's Cup game against Cruz Azul. So. Messi arrives. There's probably going to be other changes along the way. I'm convinced of that. I am convinced fully that there's going to be other roster additions and subtractions. I'll report this. I've been sitting on it for a little bit, waiting for the right time, also trying to get a little more information. I shared this with you guys while I was in Colombia and Medellin. I was trying to enjoy a vacation, but Inter Miami, news would not let me. I've heard that Victor Ulloa is on his way out. He hasn't been in uniform for a few games now, but I heard uh, almost two weeks ago now that, yeah, it's it's done deal that he will be leaving the South Florida side. Inter Miami's all-time appearance leader, a record he just set not too long ago, yeah, he's on the way out at Inter Miami. I think there's other pieces that are going to be moved. Nick Marsman hasn't been in uniform lately. It's been CJ Dos Santos. Nick Marsman was actually at the Miami Heat Arena, the Casaya Center, Kasaya Center? Is it Kasaya? Kasaya? Anyway, he was there today, I believe, doing an interview <laughs> with, a, with a colleague, a Dutch reporter, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, in which he said, you know, he has how he doesn't think Inter Miami's ready for Messi's arrival. He talked about the security detail. He talked about the stadium setup. I mean, real challenges. Even Phil Neville talked about that months ago when this topic about Messi was, was discussed in interviews. And listen, Marsman was always has always been an open and honest and insightful person to talk to. Possibly to Inter Miami's chagrin or their dismay. But nonetheless, I think Marsman is another player who's likely going to be on the way out. And I think there's players in the team now that are important to the team now that maybe we won't see when next season begins. I'm looking at Leonardo Campana. I'm looking at Gregory. I'm looking at Gene Mota. And I'm not saying that that's inside information. That's just my supposition from the outside. 
they're going to have to build a team. Chris Henderson is going to have to build a team around Messi. And maybe some of these pieces don't fit. You know, Messi's going to need runners. Andrea, you touched on how Messi's 35 years old. Clearly, on in the latter years of his career. In the last stage of his career. Playing career. He needs runners. Argentina won the World Cup, but he was surrounded by people who could run. I think the young players, by and large, generally, I think they're safe. They are low against the salary cap or the salary budget. They are homegrown, so they have the home appeal. They're young and energetic, so they can run around. I think those players are safe. I think the more veteran players that earn a little bit more, I think those players are the ones that we might be seeing moved within the next six months. You know, there was talk about Gregory leaving this past offseason. I could see that. I could see yeah. that being something that happens, especially if Busquets comes. You know, there's talk about, like you mentioned, Jose earlier, Busquets, there's Jordi Alba, there's Angel Di Maria, there's Luis Suarez. All these names that are being floated around, which under MLS Let, rules now. Let's tell the people that don't know MLS rules that that right now is not possible. So, so right now, just right now, you fun. use, but you use the right words right now. Now, uh-huh, and exactly. I th- and I think the difference and something that could happen. Yeah. Is that MLS opens up the purse strings, you know, and and I think that they do need to open up the purse strings. I'm not saying they have to go to what ex- another completely extreme, but I think they need to open up the purse strings and make the most, get as much juice out of this Leo Messi lemon as possible. Sácale todo el jugo, exprime todo el jugo de limón que es Messi, because when Beckham arrived, it was the Beckham rule, which. He's an orange. Oh, I'm an orange. Not not a lemon. Not a lemon. Uh, whatever. Same thing. You could be on team with Florida. It's all the same. It's all the same. You squeeze, <laughs> you squeeze it and get the juice out of it. All the same. Um, but when Beckham arrived, MLS introduced, and I'm doing the quotation signal here with my hands. They did the Beckham rule, which is the designated player rule, aka DP rule. That was introduced as a result of Beckham's arrival. There's three DPs now on each MLS roster. So that initial rule, dominoes fell and it grew into something larger. With Messi's arrival, why not? If there's going to be more interest in this league from players, as well as worldwide attention, why not open up the purse strings? Maybe make for 40 DPs, maybe five. Maybe raise the overall salary budget for everyone. Again, it doesn't have to be extreme, but make it so that your league can be more attractive from a viewing standpoint, and as well as from yeah. a competitive standpoint. I think yeah. if MLS misses the boat on that, and I don't think that they will, but if they miss the boat on that, it would be such a wasted opportunity. You have to make the most of the chance of having Lionel Messi in your league and all the positives that can come from that. Yeah, it would make a lot of sense. It would make a lot of sense. And, you know, I personally don't envision an Inter-Miami team that will be, you know, young per se, you know, I, I think, you know, players coming out of the academy will, will struggle to get an opportunity. And that's, that that's not bad. I mean, Inter Miami wants to win now, you know, maybe not this year, unless the, it's the open cup, but, you know, they want to win as quickly as possible. I, I, I'm assuming the goal is for Messi to win MLS cup before he leaves. And so they want to do it, do that as quickly as possible. And, you know, if you want to bring, if you want to have, um, you know, the, the the Galacticos of MLS, then, you know, most likely young players are will not be part of that of that deal. You know, I, I from the roster right now, to be honest, the only player that I would expect to continue if Inter Miami this all this, um, decides to, to build a super team would be Trey Callender because you know he's just the best player they have right now. Uh, I don't know about that. I think there's other pieces there that are interesting and they could stick around. And again, it's still MLS, but let's focus on the now, the here and now. Messi's again yeah. supposed to arrive in July. Let's say this roster for right now, this is early, premature, but let's say this roster stays as is at that point, right? You know, summer transfer window will open, but let's just say right now, there's no other additions besides Messi. Andrea. I have a ready. No, I'm going to Andrea. I want Andrea to give me her lineup with Messi on board and no other additions. 
as of the roster that's there today. Now, we don't know who the head coach will be. Tata Martino is in negotiations. That is, That has been reported now. It's no longer just a, uh, a likely scenario that, that we've that we can kind of interpret from the outside. It's something that is going on. They are talking to Tata Martino, but no I word as to... I interpreted when Messi said there are some details that we are fixing. I, I interpreted that as being a coach included in those details. I, I guess he wants Tata Martino to, to be Inter Miami's coach. That Maybe. is what I what I got from listening to yeah, Messi's it's, words. It's, it's possible. It's, what are those it's final imp- details, right? Like what what are, what are the final yeah. details that are being held up? It's probably I mean, contractually, there's definitely some of it there, and um, you know, Messi says I could have gone to Saudi Arabia. It's a lot of money, but it's not about the money for me. And I agree with that to an extent, but it's not like he's coming to MLS and, and earning peanuts to right? be like, poor, <laughs> right? It's not. It's not like he's earning like a, a fraction of what he was going to earn somewhere else. Like he's still making a, a lot of money. So again, to me, a lot of the stuff is lip service. A lot of the stuff is lip service, but again, well, anyway, Andrea, give me your starting eleven. Not what uh, I guess what you would, yeah, what you would feel because I guess we don't know who the head coach is, so hard to say who the what what the lineup will be under a head coach. But what would you do? Formation With all the players and per- that are now right. With Correct, right now, that today. That right now, okay, okay. Drake Calendar will start. The back line will what's, be the same. Wait, wait, what's the formation? Start there. I think the formation. Uh, Can I go first because no. I have it ready? <laughs> no, I want and, I want Andrea to go first. I want Andrea to go first. Uh, how... Let me go first. Andrea is your last chance. I'm thinking about it. Let me. I think. don't want her to copy you, Jose. So that's why I want her to go first. I don't copy Jose, man. Okay, I think <laughs> I think I, I I I would go to. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! I don't know. I'm gonna blame it on the time here. It's almost one a.m. and you're struggling. Uh, all right, I'm going. No, I'm I going four go, two three. I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Okay, I would go for a four. Two three one. Okay, now four, calendar four, and goal. Two. Calendar in goal, then Yelling through the right, um, Christoph, uh, Kamal Miller, and uh, Franco Negri through the left. Okay. Then I would have Dixon Arroyo. Mm-hmm. And then I would have Robert Taylor. Then I would have Messi as a 10. On one side, I would have Nicolas Stefanelli. On the other side, I would have... Coco, and on the top, I would have Campana. So Robert Taylor as a central midfielder. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. To help with the build-out. I like okay. him today, Interesting. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, all right. Jose, you're chomping at the bit over there. What would you do formation mm. and personnel? Yeah, I think it's a clear 4-2-3-1. Uh, I have no doubt about it, and I'll explain why. Um, uh, calendar and goal. Um, backline, Yetlin, um, Christoph, Miller, and Negri. Um, then I'll do Dixon, and I will actually play David Ruiz mm. alongside Dixon. Um, then I'll play Stefanelli on the left side, Messi in the middle, and on the right side, I will go with Robert Taylor. Mm-hmm. And at the top, uh, Campana. And here's my thought process with Messi. Um, I, I think if you put him in the middle, then you you basically protect him. You give him at the same time liberty to move around. You know, he can also play as a false nine. Um, he will have a support system behind him because Dixon and Ruiz are both uh, defensive minded players. So I wouldn't ask them to move forward as much. I just want to make sure they're Right behind Messi, if, if for some reason he loses the ball, that would give him the opportunity to be creative and not be concerned about, you know, counterattack opportunities. Then he'll open, he can o- easily open to the left with Stefanelli with, with, and, and, you know, a player that is very good with the ball. Same on the right side with Taylor. They both are very good with the ball. They have pace, so he, they can do all the running for him. And, you know, at the top, I think the player that will benefit the most um, with the Messi arrival will be Campana because Messi will get all the attention and Campana will get 
tons of opportunities, tons of good balls inside the box and not outside, like what he's doing right now, coming out outside the box. And that's where he can make his money. And obviously, you know, at the end of the day, he will be able to make a lot of money as well for Inter Miami or the league when he goes back to the highest level. So that will be my thought process. I got this, I would say, 10 minutes after I learned that it was real and that Messi will be here. Hmm. So I'm set. I'm set. I can sell this idea anywhere in the world right now. <laughs> so I said I didn't want I know Andrea. what Franco will say. I say what Franco, I know what Franco will what, say. What am I going to say? <laughs> What am I gonna but say? you don't agree with with neither Jose or me. <laughs> that is incorrect, Andrea. Because I said I didn't want wow. you to copy Jose, but I think I agree with Jose. I think that that is the lineup as of today that I would go with, and I will tell you why. Although I do have questions about a part of it, and not because Jose said it, I'm just saying I, there are questions there for the team based on the personnel available. But I agree, the back four and calendar. I think that's set in stone. That first line of the midfield is where the real questions arise. Who do you put around Messi? Who do you put behind Messi? Again, I think you need workhorses. I think you need players that defensively can help pick up the slack that he's not going to do. The defensive work that he's not going to press. He's not going to try to get into 50-50s on a regular basis. So I think you need two workhorses. I think Arroyo and Ruiz are better suited for that. Kremaski is the other option. And he can get stuck in, but I don't think he covers enough ground. I think Ruiz covers more ground. And he's not that great with the ball. Which then leads me to the questions of, how does the ball get to Messi? You know, who in that first line of the midfield is going to consistently pass? That is why you put it... Put, I, I, that's why put I understand. It, or I, how, how did it? I understand well, how completely. do you say put or put it? That's why you that's why you put Robert Taylor there. And I completely understand the thought process behind it. I get that that's why you would put him there. You'd put a technical player there to try to get the ball to Messi. I don't know if I agree with the personnel in in you know in your approach because Robert Taylor is a player that likes to go at people one on one and you can't really do that when you're playing as a as an eight or a mixto because if you lose the ball then you've just left your team pretty exposed at the back. So I don't think it plays to his strengths, but I agree with your overall point that if you could have a technical eight that can also put in some work defensively, that'd be ideal. But Inter Miami doesn't really have that. Gene Mota's injured. And he's yeah, going to be injured Gene for much of the year. So mm-hmm. I think you got to go two defensive midfielders and maybe you give Arroyo the responsibilities to, to try to get the ball to Messi and leave just David Ruiz to, to break things up. And then It's I... not that difficult of a pass, though. I mean, Messi usually comes down and, you know, picks the ball. You know, he, he might even take it sure, away. Sure, but opposing teams are going to know they're trying to get the ball to Messi, cut off that passing option. Like, So it's not going to be also just as simple as, like, oh, pass it forward to Messi. I mean, so... Th- and, and Dixon Arroyo is def- a defensive-minded player. So... But I, I agree with you, Jose. That's the first line of midfield based on the players that are available. Right now, Busquets. If Busquets, the- if Busquets arrives, it's a different story. But again, we're oh yeah, the absolutely. exercise is based off the roster today. Uh, I- that's a solid team, Franco. I mean, that's a solid team right there. You know, just by adding Messi, if everything clicks, you know, if everything clicks quickly, that's not a bad team because you know. What about Pizarro as a night? Nah, Pizarro. I'm just. I just feel like, you know, Pizarro, we're, we're back to square one with him. You know, where can we put him? It's it's not a matter of... He's oh, not, so not going to be a 10. Pizarro, so, yeah. So not going it, to be a 10, yeah. Yeah, it's not like, you know, we have Pizarro, oh, so we know exactly what we where we want him to play. He's not a it winger. Like, oh, okay, so where do we put him? Do we bring Taylor out, uh, but we lose pace? You know, he's, he doesn't play it as good, close to the, you know, through the wings. Uh, we cannot put him in the middle because, you know, he's not a, as a defensive-minded player like Ruiz or Dixon. So where do we put him? And that's that's the reason why I didn't include Pizarro in, in, in my in my 11. Because I feel like we still don't have that position where we know he's going to be effective. We're just giving him a chance because he's a DP and Pizarro, you know, the first, you know, quote-unquote, start for Inter-Miami. 
I think that's the only reason why we're thinking of Pizarro, but we haven't seen anything from him that would lead us to believe, oh, yeah, he, he, if we put him in a starting 11, in that position, he's going to be effective. So, but to my point, I think this is a solid team. If they click, if Tata Martino comes and listens to Miami Total Football Radio and Jose's analysis of the starting 11. You have to speak Spanish because Tata I, doesn't I, understand. Ah, sí, Tatita, aquí estamos. So I will do him a favor, the 4 2 three, three, one that would take you to the players, Tata. Listen to me. I mean, I agree. I agree with Jose, so I don't know if you can take all the credit. But anyway, anyway, uh, listen, Stefanelli on the left, Taylor on the right. Uh, to what I was saying. We actually, the three of us said the same thing, the same formation. Said the same formation, ideas. different personnel, mm -hmm. yeah. I think mm -hmm. Robert Taylor on the wing is better suited because, again, like I mentioned before, like one of his strengths is to go at players. Wednesday's game and this season overall, notwithstanding, um, you know, he hasn't been that good this season. Uh, even even on tonight against Birmingham Legion, when he tried to go out players one-on-one, -on -one, he lost the ball pretty easily. But I think if you deploy him out there and, and with the attention Messi will attract, I think that can free him up to have more success. And then up top, Campana is the best strike option, striker option that you have. Uh, that's what I, I agree with you, Jose. 4-2-3-1 with that personnel. Questions about that midfield, though, that first line. Of the midfield. Do you now, agree that it's a solid team? So that's no, that's the next question. That's the next I mean, question. Should people expect so that's the next good question. results from their team? All right, ask the question. So Inter Miami's not that far in the standings from a playoff spot. You know, it's been doom and gloom. You know, we've been very critical because the team has been in a bad way. But realistically speaking, they are Six points off the final playoff spot. That's because nine teams make the playoffs in the Eastern Conference. That's two wins. You can make up that ground very quickly. So, Jose, the question, I revert it and flip it back to you. What are realistic expectations for Messi and Inter-Miami? Right? Like, is this team going to be a contender now because Messi arrives? Or are they just going to be a middle-of-the-pack team that makes the playoffs? Or will they continue to struggle and not even make the playoffs? What do you think will happen for Inter Miami? And then we can talk about Messi afterwards. Contender. Contender uh, well, for the title? Right. That's what I'm saying. Are they a contender for the trophy, for MLS Cup? Are they just uh, a middle-of-the-pack playoff team? No, or do no, they no. not make the playoffs? No, no, no. I think they will be a, a lot more fun to watch. I think they should make the playoffs with Messi. They should make the playoffs without a doubt. But I wouldn't go that far to make them a contender because I think it's going to take some time. And we still don't know what, what type of Messi we're going to get. You know, we don't know how long is it going to take for him to right. um, get adjusted to the league, yeah, and uh, work the out city. the system. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, the weather situation in South Florida, we all know how. Most of the players coming from Europe, they have struggled with the with the humidity. So you know, if Mess if Messi plays sixty minutes for the first month and a half, then where are we? You know, if he plays in in late July, then we're early September, and Messi's still not playing ninety minutes. Then I don't know. I'm not a hundred percent sure that you know a lot will change. But I think they should make the playoffs. They, okay. they should make the players. They should be an attacking-minded player. I think, you know, tonight's game would have, was a perfect example of how they are missing him already. <laughs> After just a few hours they are already uh, of the announcement, they are already missing him. Because tonight against Birmingham, you know, with uh, a 10, Inter-Miami should have won that game easily. Mm. Easily. They mm -hmm. had so much room, so many opportunities. And they just couldn't. There was, you know, they didn't have a creative mind on the field. And finally, we're gonna get someone that can kick the ball, and we don't have to be asking who is going to take the the free kicks. And <laughs> I jokingly, and the balls. I jokingly tweeted today, and anyone who's listened to the show for some time or has listened to my questions in the press conference uh, with two different head coaches, Diego Alonso and Phil Neville, you know, they know about. Uh, a repeated line of questioning that I have. And I tweeted out today, I bet, I guess I better get my best set piece questions ready. Um, but no, and then I wrote I wrote second tweet saying, just kidding, Messi's going to score an Olympico with every corner <laughs> kick and uh, go top shelf with every free kick. 
Um, obviously, I'm being tongue in cheek, but yeah, you know. Yeah. If, if you know the inside nice. joke, you know the inside joke. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I, I think the that one thing that nice I want to hold on, hold on, Andrea, go ahead. This that would be nice finally for this team because, as Jose was saying today, you could see that hole in in, in that midfield. So it's gonna be nice to finally uh, see that team after Pozuelo left. To, to get a player that can do that again and that can do that as we have seen Messi do it uh, for all of his career. So um, I think Inter Miami is going to benefit from that. I think Inter Miami is going to become an, uh, a playoff team with Messi. I don't think they are title contenders because I do agree with Jose and what where you were saying, Franco, that it's difficult coming to this league and some players don't ever uh, acclimate to mm-hmm. the league, to mm-hmm. the style of play, to the roughness, because that is something that Messi has not dealt with. And when he has dealt with that, playing with Central American teams or with uh, some teams that are not as technical as he is, he has suffered. So now he has he he will have to do that every weekend. So it, it's it's going to be interesting to see how he acclimates to that and how he, how he takes that. So that is why I wouldn't say they are a title contenders because they haven't showed it in the in in mm. in, in this time. But with Messi, they could be a clear contender for the playoffs and 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 to get and and fight for a spot on, on the playoffs. Could they should be? I, again, yeah, they should. I, I yeah, agree with both should. of you that with Messi, this is a playoff team, right? Whether they perform or not, that this this has the the makings of a playoff team. Right again, six points shy of it. You know, they're a difference maker and a couple of wins away from getting right there in the playoff picture. So absolutely, this should be a playoff team. I don't think they're a contender just yet. Again, based off the roster today. Two more signings come and they're big names or they they add some some experience and uh, difference-making abilities and that changes the whole dynamic of everything. But as of today, I think it's a playoff team. I do not think they're a contender. I think next year is the year where they'll have more time. They'll have a second transfer window yeah. with Messi to, to add pieces and remove pieces and, again, not have to deal with the sanctions. I think next year's the year where Inter Miami should be looked at as a contender or what they should be striving to be a contender next year. I think this year is just the building block, the first piece of the Messi puzzle. Um, but you never know. In MLS, you have a star player that can make the difference. You get hot at the right time at the end of the year, you can make a run. It's been done before, so uh, I won't. Say, but I won't say that they're a contender. I'll say that they they will be a, a playoff team with Lionel Messi. Now, you touched on something, Jose, that I think deserves to be talked about in a little more detail. Clearly, Lionel Messi will be leaps and bounds more talented than anyone in the league. However, I have covered and we have seen plenty of other very talented players from Europe that have played at the highest levels, that have won World Cups, come over here and struggled. I saw Thierry Henry struggle. I saw Tim Cahill struggle initially. And it's because of the things you mentioned. The travel, the style of play, the physicality, the different conditions that exist. You'll be playing in the heat in South Florida and humidity one weekend. And then the next weekend you could be in the altitude of Colorado or... The, the, blister- <laughs> and the blistering cold of New York City, right? So there's different elements there that come to, at, to come to play or come into play that make it difficult for players to adjust. You know, the travel time alone, you know, flying four or five hours is something that isn't common in Europe. It's not something they do regularly. So it, it's, it takes some getting used to. In addition to Messi... He's going to need to get his family settled and, and get everything sorted in that way. And I'm sure Inter Miami will do everything they can to help facilitate and make it as easy as possible. But these are things that do impact players. Like, again, Tim Kale and Thierry Henry, when I was covering the Red Bulls, their initial spells after they arrived in the summer weren't that great. It wasn't until the next year, when they had more time in their second seasons, their first full seasons, that they started to perform a lot better and a lot more to expectations. So with Messi, there's going to be high expectations. He's going to be looked at as the hero, the guy that's going to come in and save and salvage Inter Miami season. Maybe that's fair, maybe that's unfair. But it comes with being Messi, and it comes with this 
15th place Inter Miami team. Again, I think they make the playoffs, but they'll they'll need to reinforce some some pieces along the way for next year to to really really push to be a contender. It also depends I, on which head coach they get. It also depends on if Tata is the coach or if they go a different direction. I think he'll you know I I think he'll make Stefanelli Campana and and Taylor or or Coco better than what we have seen you know they are not bad players you know they're not players that you know you know they they have they have something in them but i just think you know phil was never able to take the best out of them um obviously he had more time with some player than some some of those players than others but i think with messi around that will open you know, a, a, a whole new set of opportunities for them. Just like, you know, he probably did the same in, in for Argentina in the national team. You know, yeah. the players around him, you know, if you take Messi away from them, especially in the early stages of Caloneta, then, you know, they were not, you know, a, a contender for, for the, to, to win the, the World Cup title. They were not. But he made them better. And I would expect him to do that even if he doesn't score 20 goals in a season or well assist he's probably going to get a thousand because yeah. <laughs> well i would love to see messi's face when someone is explaining to him uh, uh che boludo en esta liga se cuentan las segundas asistencias <laughs> <laughs> the secondary assist, yes, the beloved yeah. secondary assist that we love so much here in Miami Total Football Radio. Uh, yeah, with that stat, Messi is going to rack them up, man. If I was Messi, I would have been like, let me have a clause for assist because if I break that assist exactly. record, then uh, you guys yeah. got to pay me even more. Um, but, okay, let's see. We've covered a whole lot with regards to Messi. Anything else that you guys think we should add here? Again, this is a... Miami Total Football Radio episode after dark. Kind of freestyled it and ad hoc it here. Did I get to do a, a whole rundown like we normally do to prepare for the talking points we're going to talk about? I mean, the contract apparently is two and a half uh, years. So through 25 with an option for one more for 2026. That's what's being reported. We know that he gets a, a stake in the revenue from Apple, stake in the revenue from Adidas. There will be also a bunch of other corporate sponsors shortly. So, um, you know, again, he's not he's not taking a huge, massive pay cut here, but nonetheless, uh, anything you want to add with regards? I have to one this? more thing. To any add. any other topic you think we need to discuss with regards to Messi? No, I I want to I, I I want to bring to this spot. You know the the the, the background story to to Inter Miami because I think it's fair now that everybody believes in Inter Miami as you know Messi's team and and that's the case of course but you know there were people that really fought for this team before it was really something be- before we knew it was Inter Miami um, there were people that you know they really wanted to have. Uh, an MLS team in South Florida. Uh, they fought for this team. You know, they they believed David Beckham in the early stages, where you know everybody thought it would be easy to get an MLS team here just because it's MLS. Um, obviously, the team went through a lot of problems when it comes to building a stadium, finding a place to play. I ended up in Fort Lauderdale. But I think it's important to never forget those moments where. You know, a whole bunch of people were just waiting for things to happen. And some of the group of of people continue to believe, you know, people like, you know, um, Southern Legion, they they're from the start. They they have been there fighting for it. So for those people, and obviously we don't know them all, but for those people that are listening, this means a whole lot more than just, you know, getting messy and and whatever that means in terms of media attention for those people it means that you know the work that they put out there on those days is now actually a reality and they you know are getting very very close to having a comp- not only a professional team in south florida but a competitive team which is something that they were promised and, and and it looks like that will happen so 
I didn't want to let the opportunity go of recognizing those people because I saw them with my own eyes. When people stopped believing in this, and maybe it was a smaller group, and now it's huge and it will be even bigger. But I think those people, and they know who they are, they deserve the recognition of the work that they did back then. So I will say, if you want to talk about recognition, I think Jorge Mas and Jose Mas, going back to the start of this segment, they deserve a world of praise because they've talked about bringing superstars for a long time and it took some time, took some patience in a market that's not usually patient and that isn't patient, but they delivered. They delivered. The South Florida guys showed how it's done. And for that, they deserve all the props in the world. Yes, MLS helped them. Yes, Apple helped them. Yes, Adidas helped them. But they were the ones that were leading the way. And they made good on a promise that was made long, long ago. That they would bring over superstars. They brought not only over a superstar, they brought over the superstar. The global superstar. Months removed from winning a World Cup. And yes, he's not in the prime of his career anymore. Yes, he's in the final stages of his career but it's still the greatest player of all time. And he had no shortage of options, could have gone elsewhere. He's here. This is a transformative moment for Inter-Miami, for MLS, and for soccer in the United States, for football in Estados Unidos. All right, we will leave it there for this first segment. We'll come back very quickly, really fast recap Wednesday night's game, which is kind of an afterthought. But that's the way it goes when Messi announces his next team. And we'll do a very quick Q&A. We'll do that after this. So a very quick recap of Wednesday night's match because there was a game played. U.S. Open Cup quarterfinals at Protective Stadium in Birmingham, Alabama. Inter-Miami visited Birmingham Legion, the USL Championship side, which has plenty of MLS experience on the roster and the coaching staff and in the front office. This was Inter-Miami's starting lineup of 4-2-3-1. Drake Callender and goal, DeAndre Yedlin, Serhi Kristoff, Kamal Miller, Franco Negri make up the back four. The first line of the midfield, David Ruiz and Ian Frey. Second line of the midfield from right to left, Corentin Jean, Benjamin Kremaski, and Nicolas Stefanelli. Up top, Joseph Martinez. The lone goal comes in the 56th minute from Nicolas Stefanelli, the second one he has scored in this competition. Off of a low cross from Corentin Jean. And that's it. That's all Inter Miami needed. Now, as I reported for the Miami Herald, as I continue to fill in for Michelle Kaufman, who is away on vacation, uh, Rodolfo Pizarro was back in uniform. Dixon Arroyo and Ryan Saylor missed out. And Harvey Neville was, again, not with the first team he's expected to play, from what sources tell me. Or or at least he's supposed to be in uniform on Thursday with Inter-Miami's second team. So, Jose, you touched on this in the first segment very quickly. And I agree with you. That not only was it a problem in this game, but it was a, it's been a problem for the entire season. There's a lack of creativity in this group. There's not that many creative players. right? I just named the starting lineup. Who's creative in there? Like Who can create something for you? Whether it's on the dribble, or with a pass, or on their own. Who? Nicolas Stefanelli, to a degree. And I would say Franco Negri. Besides that, I don't think there's anyone that can make the difference. Just, yes, Joseph Martinez can... But, you know, you could argue he could finish if he's given the chance, but he needs, he relies on that service. He's not making that difference on his own. I think those are the only two guys, definitely and Negri. And you saw in this game... That side. <laughs> <laughs> and you saw in this game the same thing we've seen for much of this year, which was Inter Miami playing hopeful cross after hopeful cross towards the middle, no one getting on the end of it. Uh, again, it took... It took one moment where they finally were able to to get across, and it wasn't even shot well by Stefanelli. You know, he kind of no hizo no hizo buen contacto with the ball. He kind of 
flubbed uh, the contact, but it was enough to have a looping finish into the back of the net. But by and large, it was a lot of crosses that, that were for not. Now, that doesn't mean Inter Miami didn't have chances in this game because they did have other chances. But by and large, for much of the game, they just lacked that creativity. That They continue to lack that creativity that Messi should bring. Because Messi can beat you on the dribble by himself. Messi can beat you with a pass to a teammate. Or Messi can beat you with a shot from distance on his own. So that will, I agree with you, open up things for other players and help them to flourish a bit more. I think it was evident here how bad they missed the number 10. And of course, Messi will be here in July, but you know, if they could get him in here sooner, it'd be even better because this team sorely, sorely, sorely lacks that creativity. Jose. Yeah, and you know, the, the one thing that's concerning as well, and, and I agree with you 100%, by the way, but the, the other thing that's concerning is that, you know, Coco came out and it looked like he came out with an injury, similar scenario with the Ian Frey. And, you know, as much as you are excited about Messi, you know, it's, it's, it's still a, a little bit over a month uh, until he plays a game for you. So if you're into Miami, you need to try to, you know, stay afloat. Don't dig that deep a hole. Because, you know, it's going to be harder for him to come and everybody's going to expect results immediately. But it's going to take some time. And I think right now, you know, even though I like the, the substitution in, in the second half when uh, Javi Morales brought in uh, uh, Robert Taylor, I think that that gave the team a little bit of a spark. But it gave them a little bit of, of the same, except that now on to the right side. You know, in the first half, it was on the left with mm -hmm. Stefanelli. And then Taylor comes in, and then you get exactly the same, but on the right side, nothing through the middle. And sometimes I feel for Joseph Martinez because I think he's the lone guy that, you know, he, he, he doesn't get as many opportunities. And so um, they need to find a way to fix that. And I don't know if Javi Morales is working on something. It's, you know, it, honestly for him, it's a struggle right now because how many training sessions did he really put out there? I mean, probably two or three. You know, they, they have been playing a lot. So um, it was frustrating at times. If, if Messi was not on deck, then, you know, we'll probably be having a different conversation. But obviously, Messi brings, you know, that hope that things will change in July. So today, as I mentioned earlier, when I was, you know, friends were texting me and I was also texting people in and around the team, I did hear that as this news was breaking about Messi online, that some players in Inter Miami's camp, you know, there's excitement for sure, absolutely, especially from the younger players, but that there's a little bit of uncertainty for some players. Like, uh oh, what does this mean for me? Does yeah. it mean I'm going to stick around? Does this mean I'm going to be traded? Does that mean I'm going to leave? You know, that it definitely brings some uncertainty to it. That could be a problem too, because that sure. happens in teams in MLS. Absolutely, and I, and and I highly recommend to any listener who has not read the Beckham experiment, but experiment by the great Grant Wall, the great and late Grant Wall, that you read that because again, it, it shows insights into when you bring in a superstar and the dynamics that can happen behind the scenes. But nonetheless, anyway, Inter Miami overcame that. And they won this game 1-0. to Drake Callender did have to make a couple of saves, you know. Especially, Let me tell especially you, let's on. talk about the penalty. Right. It was a disgrace. We have to talk about that. And I also want to add uh, the penalty. And uh, to add that this is, as we said a couple of podcasts ago, this is Inter My Inter Miami chance to win something this season. Concrete chance. And this would be Inter Miami chance to play an international tournament next year. So uh, the next game is in August. Messi is going to be here, and they're playing Cincinnati. You don't know. We don't know yet if it's at home or or if they will travel to to Ohio. But this is a chance for Inter Miami to get in an international competition, to get the most of Messi. Because if Inter Miami doesn't play uh, the Champions Cup next year it's going to be a loss for them. And it's going to be a loss for them because they have Messi here, but they cannot compete in the biggest tournament in the region and they cannot compete with the Mexican teams. So um, it, this is important for Inter Miami. And, and moving forward, I think it will be an important important match, that match on, on, on August, for them to win. 
right, and to get to the final. They've reached the semifinals of the U.S. Open Cup for the first time in franchise history. Now, you touched on the penalty kick. That wasn't. Uh, Sergei Kristoff with an outstretched right arm. The ball looks to have hit him there. Uh, it wasn't called. And in Miami got a little bit lucky there because there's no VAR in the U.S. Open Cup. So Inter Miami got a little bit of good fortune there on Messi signing day. The you know the the football heavens smiled down on Inter Miami today and kept the good juju going because that absolutely could have been a penalty kick there in the first half and it could have led to them trailing. <laughs> you know I do agree with Jose though that in that in that first half you chuckle about that, but you know what made me chuckle a little bit was just like the repeated pattern, the repeated sequence of. A pass in behind, slipped in behind to Franco Negri, who's making a, a darting run forward from his left back position to then whip in across that nobody got on the end of. We saw that time and time and time again, especially in that first half. It was just like there was no other idea. There was no other a player that could help try to make the difference. But anyway, it reminds me wins. Like Andrea said, they will play in the U.S. Open Cup semifinals, a step away from the team's and the franchise's first ever cup final. Two steps away from the franchise's first ever trophy. So they're they're close. And Messi will be there for that game. Again, August 23rd, it'll be either home or away. The draw is supposed to happen on Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll know soon whether Inter Miami will be playing another home game. Uh, which, by the way, with the parking situation as it is now, I mean, and Messi's coming... It's gonna be, be a night. It's gonna be a mess. It's gonna yeah. Be they a better mess. figure something out. They got. They gotta build that out. park, man. Just start paying that. Just, just do it. Just get build that park. Build the park. Exactly. Yeah. Just, build just the park just and do pay it. that one million and be over with and get the parking. Because as great as it'll be to see Messi in the stadium and for him to perform and score goals and be in the highlight reels, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, I mean, having people complain about the overall experience is not going to do you any good because there's going to be people from all corners of the world that are going to be coming to see him play at Drive Pink Stadium. It's not just going to be South Floridians that live here. I mean, you're going to have tourists. You're going to have people from South America. You're going to have people from Europe. You're going to have people from everywhere. They're going to try to experience that game day feel with Inter Miami in the pink and black. Which, by the way, you can't even get an Inter Miami pink jersey right now online. If you try to go to MLSstore.com, uh, I think it is, the official MLS store, and you try to customize a 10 messy jersey, it gives you an error message and says you can't use this, this these characters or whatever. It won't let you. MLS clearly... I guess it's because he, does, he hasn't signed and they can't use their, his name. Well, you can make up any name. What if my name was Messi? That's not, that's not what well, it is. Your it's... name is not uh, copyright protected. No, no, no. no. <laughs> that, that, you can't do it because MLS is planning to charge, I'm sure, a pretty penny for those jerseys. They, they want it to be... You know, he, he's going to earn a percentage of the jersey sales, I'm sure. So Finally, Carlos Vela is getting the throne. <laughs> so, so exactly. So then, you know, that if you get a customized Messi jersey, jersey, that, that probably, style, won't, yeah. uh, probably won't count for his overall haul. So that's got to be worked in there. So like, I actually, when the rumors were, were picking up today, I did that. I went to MLS store and I, I wanted to get the image of Messi and the 10 in an Inter-Miami jersey. And I couldn't do it. So I had to get creative about how I did it. I won't share how I did it. But I got creative, and I was able to make it happen. If you want to, you know, feast your eyes on what a messy ten Inter Miami jersey will look like, go over to at MIA Total Football on Instagram. We have it there for your viewing pleasure. I had to get creative. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. Um, anything else about this game? I mean, we don't have to go too much into it. You know, they they got through. They survived. It's part of the. And the second to last, the penultimate game in this 14 match and 49 days stretch. It's been a grueling, grueling part of the season. Inter Miami's had plenty of injuries along the way. You know, they definitely need to go into the inter international break in a bad way. Still have one more match this weekend against the New England Revolution. But I don't think there's much else to say about this game. I mean, it's just other, other than, other than, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts, both of you, but quickly. Post game. We all ask, as is our reporting responsibility and our journalistic responsibility, yes, about the game, but also about Messi and what it means to the organization. And we got nothing. Javi Morales clearly under instruction 
sidestepped every messy question. Didn't make a single comment about it. And we didn't even get a player. Normally we get a coach and a player. We didn't even get a player. It's like as if they had suffered the worst loss ever and they made no player available. I get Messi hasn't signed. I get, you know, there's probably reasons that they don't want to say a whole lot. But listen, if you can have Jorge Mas posting on Twitter, you know, a 10 Messi jersey in, in the dark, and you can have social media posts on your on your Twitter feed. I mean, you Dragging can Dragging ha- everyone. You can, <laughs> you can have... You can come and coach saying, and, and "Look, it's great." It. You can say, have a coach say, exactly. "It's great for us." You know, we're looking forward to having exactly. him. It doesn't. Have, he doesn't have to go into a whole lot of detail, but he could have said something, something. Exactly. I mean, Jose, I know you were frustrated about that. Like very quickly, anything you want to add about the zip it approach from Inter Miami? Yeah, I think you know it's it's just it, it was unfortunate because you know. Um, they obviously knew that we wanted to get something out of it. And um, it's not like we didn't acknowledge the, the game. I think most of the people that were on the call, they cover the game, at least were watching the game. It's not like, you know, there was, uh, you know, 20 or 30 media outlets from all over the world that, you know, they didn't care about Javi Morales winning because he said at the end of the press conference, nobody asked me about. Hey, I congratulated him. I did congratulate yeah. him there at the beginning. I was the first question. Uh, and I congratulate you. Know, him. I, I like Javi and everything, but Javi, I mean, Messi, Messi. I mean, he's it's, but he, he's clearly he's clearly being a good soldier and just following the instructions. Oh, of like, course, I get it, I get it. But you know, I guess then we shouldn't, you know, say anything about him. But about it's not about him. It's about him right, the instruction the, about not the, talking right, about from the organization. Why? Why be so tight lipped about everything? Like, I get it. Messi hasn't signed, but if you guys can go on social media and, and publish things it just it, especially it, 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 with a video like they did because no, the video it, was dragging everyone that was reporting that Messi was not coming to Inter Miami so like, you would expect it, them to speak on it when they have an opportunity no, what, it, it seemed like if you ask him do you know Lionel, Lionel Messi then he'll be like no I can't talk about that I don't know who that is <laughs> I mean, come on. It's just as simple as, you know, oh, yeah, it's a great day. But I don't want to talk about that. You know, there's there's so many ways to go. There's so many ways to go. But, you know, I guess it, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, it doesn't take anything away from the big news. And, you know, uh, at some point, they're going to have to talk about it. All right. Yes, at some point. Who knows when at some point will be. The next availability is Friday before this game against the New England Revolution. Doesn't seem like we'll get answers then either. Doesn't seem like it, but maybe. Maybe. Keep our fingers crossed. We'll do our best you, to try to get please something. Send us, no, please. We don't want to drive from <laughs> Miami all the way to New York City for nothing. Thank you. Sorry, this is messy mania, my friend. You want to be a part of it, you got to sacrifice. All right? All right? Um, like we are right now, recording here well into the morning. It's past 1.30 a.m. It's 1.36, people. 1.36 Hit the like button, the subscribe button, all <laughs> the buttons available. Yes. On your phone. Yes. It's 136. We're doing this for you, people. <laughs> and if you can and you haven't already, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Please. Just one word. If you want, you can give us one star. I prefer you not. But if you just want to leave us a star review with a you know one-word response or anything, just please do. It helps us tremendously. So I think that does it for this week's show. As for the final thought, I'm going to ask you to use one word to describe Messi's arrival. That's it. That's all. That's the only final thought you guys get. It's the only final thought I will give. One word to describe Messi's arrival. We will start with Jose because if I go with Andrea, she's going to be doing some thinking like we saw earlier, and that's going to take a while. So you have time now here, Andrea. Jose, you're up first. Fire. Andrea. Exciting. Dang, now I'm pulling in Andrea and I'm thinking of a word. So now I, wasn't, I wasn't ready. I wasn't, so I, now you're thinking. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. See, I got we're freestyling here. Um, transformative. So that does it for the second edition of Miami Total Football Radio this week. It was an emergency pod. It wasn't planned or expected. 
but it's part of a pleasant surprise for Inter Miami fans and for us on the media side. We will soon be covering, arguably, the greatest of all time. So we will be back next week to dissect the final game before the international break, which is this weekend's match on the road against the New England Revolution. And we'll talk about what what other messy topics come up between now and then, because you know, there's probably going to be plenty. So for Jose Armando, for Andrea Yanis, I am Franco Penizo. You have been listening to Miami Total Football Radio. And we'll talk to you guys very, very soon.